Well, hello, everyone. We're back here with another interview, and this time we're going up into the northern part of Minnesota for our interview today. We have Josh Bolio. He drives the number 22B with Soda Modified out of Bemidji, Minnesota. Josh, how are you doing this evening? I'm not too bad. Busy, but, you know, got to make time to do what you got to do. Yeah, balancing work and getting ready for racing season. It's a hectic time of year, I'm sure. Well, with work, and then we took over a traction stand, so trying to stay busy with that and keep up with that and get the race car done and building a body on a buddy's race car right now, so it's kind of, there's not enough time in a day. Well, and I'm sure a lot of times when you're trying to help out other racers and kind of get a business going, that race car kind of gets put on the back burner. <laughs> uh, especially our car, yeah. Our car's it's actually sitting out in the trailer right now with somebody else's car in the garage, and even this car in the garage, I should have been done with, but it's like, okay, I'm going to work on it this day. And then somebody calls and they want a traction stand. So it's like, okay, get this done and shipped out the same day or the next day. And it's like, okay, that one's gone. So I got to build another one to make sure I have like, try to keep three, four on a shelf at all times. So it's mm -hmm. run, run, run. Yep. You got to make sure you make sure you have enough work money so that I can support the racing fund. Right. <laughs> exactly. Something's got to pay for that race car. Yep, absolutely. Well, uh, it's been nice to get to know you over the last couple of years, see you race a few times throughout the, the last few years, but uh, to get let the audience get to know you a little bit, talk to us about how many years you've been racing and what all you've raced up to this point. Um, I think this is my 14th or 15th year, I think, and I started in a Wasota Streeter, grew up, my family, uh, my uncles are great uncles and cousins that race growing up, so I grew up next to them, watching them, and then when I was old enough, I started helping them, and then uh, um, they all they all got out of it, so I found some buddies that race, and I helped them for a while, and finally I'm like, nope, it's my turn, and I bought a Wasota Streeter, and I raced in like Grand Forks and Greenbush and Brainerd some, and then um, a buddy of mine's like, hey, you should buy my modified. I'm like, I can't afford a modified. He's like, I'll sell it to you cheap. And I'll give you a motor to run. I'm like, okay. So then we bought a modified in 2013. I bought a, an old Jones chassis modified and ran that for the first year. Then I bought a new one after that. And we raced with soda modifieds for the first few years. Then um, some of my local tracks were switching to IMCA. So then I switched to all IMCA for a while and did that. And now we switched back to Wasota racing a little bit closer to home and whatnot. And yeah, it's been, been a up and down road for sure. Like last year was a struggle. Yeah. There's definitely years where everything seems to be clicking and in other years is just like, Oh, okay. Well this year again, can't, can't get done soon enough. Yeah. Yeah. The year before we had a, we had a good year, picked up quite a few wins and track championship and just had good, had, you know, good year, had fun and always up front. And then last year we wrecked four motors. So it wasn't, wasn't much fun and it was expensive. Yeah. Definitely takes a damper on the whole racing program when you have bad luck that kind of follows you all the way through the year. But uh, yeah, I do remember, I see, remember a race, you races in, in the IMSA modified uh, I believe at Buffalo River is where I saw you mostly. Yeah, we raced Buffalo River quite a few Sundays back then. We had a little base out of Bemidji. We'd race eight on a Thursday, come home, work half a day Friday. And then we'd haul ass down to Princeton, race Friday night, stay at a buddy's house down there, and race Brainerd on Saturday, stay at a buddy's house in Brainerd, and then wake up. And then Sunday, we would take off the Buffalo River, race there, and then finally come home, you know, one o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. It was a long weekend, but it was fun. I say that's a lot of traveling, especially from Bemidji. That drive from Bemidji to Princeton, what is that, like three, four hours? It's like three, three and a half, yeah. Okay. You know, the drive down was bad, but then you stayed at a, a house right there, and then you know Brainerd was fairly close the next day, so it wasn't too, too bad on the way home. You kind of made your way back, but it was a long way down there. Yeah, that's kind of the way I kind of formulate my schedule, especially if I'm traveling a far distance. I usually there's usually a track or two within an hour and a half of the next place that I kind of usually stay in that area. So that way it's not overly uh, travel intensive on some of the weekends, too. Yeah, you got to so, plan that. What's that? You got to plan some of that. So I can go here this day and hit this this day and hit this on the way home or. Oh, yeah. Like that. Yep. Well, especially like when I'm kind of like following a couple of the tours, usually that, that schedule is kind of laid out for me, but those free weekends, I'm like, okay, well, if I head out to Western North Dakota, I'll probably stay at a friend's place or my parents' place and then kind of go from there. Yep. Pretty smart. Cheaper that way too. And you can stay at somebody's house. Been very thankful. There's actually been quite a few jars that are like, Hey, 
you need a place to sleep. I have a couch. I have an extra room if you need to crash. And I'm like, well, that's that's always appreciated. Yeah. Well, since the since you're looking for them kind of places, we have an extra room here. If you ever in Bemidji need a place to stay. <laughs> well, perfect. I've only been up there twice so far in the last couple of years, and it's a pretty cool place. I know it's a it's a little bit like kind of in the backwoods, but I I like I really like the culture up there. What do you think of the Bemidji Speedway as a whole? Um, it's not bad. We race it because it's close to home, and you know we have fairly good success there most of the time. But you know, it's not Grand Forks, but it's a place to race that's close to home. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Having a place in your backyard, especially uh, one that's on a Sunday night, I'm sure that helps a lot too. It's about two and a half, three miles from our house. So it's pretty close. And yeah, and on a Sunday that helps. Yep. So it's just like, okay, well, we have a lot of work to do at the end of the weekend, but good thing we only have like a three to five minute drive home. And it's like, we can kind of push that off for a day or so. And I'm still one of the last ones there every week. <laughs> Do you have a pretty good big fan club there or a lot of sponsors that kind of show up? Uh, yeah, we've got a big fan club there and a lot of our sponsors are kind of based out of Bemidji and we got, you know, some bigger ones that are more nationally like, you know, Weir's Machine and places like that are kind of get everywhere. But we got a lot of our smaller, you know, like Whitner Auto Body and some of the Crossroads Auto Glass that are Bemidji based. So really us having them on the car only really helps when we race here. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to have a good local fan group to kind of hang out with after the races, especially. And usually Bemidji, I know they started a little bit earlier on Sundays at most other tracks, so you probably get done at a pretty decent time. Um, a lot of the times we get done early. I mean, we do run a lot of classes of cars, so sometimes it does run late, but usually we're done pretty early. We can be loaded up right around dark time, so it's better than like when I'd race Buffalo River, I'd get home at 1 in the morning, where now I'm at least home by, you know, 10, 10.30. <laughs> Get a good night's sleep at least to get ready for the work week, which we all love to do after a race weekend. What's the sleep you speak of? <laughs> yeah, that's uh I, I neglect it quite a bit. Yeah. Energy drinks, coffee, and what else whatever else you need. Yeah, yeah. It's been a lot of Mountain Dew for me the last few summers. Yeah, I'm an energy drink kind of guy. So I vary for a while it was rain and then it was storm. Now I'm on a NOS kick and who knows what's next? <laughs> hey, maybe it'll turn into a future sponsorship. You never know. Yeah. I think they like the big guys, though. The big big name and TV stuff. <laughs> ah, well, we'll get your name out there, hopefully. I mean, I wouldn't say no, that's for sure. Well, you got a nice background there with all the pictures and photos of various cars across your racing career. Uh, I assume there's quite a few big moments and big wins that stick out. What's a couple that stick out throughout your racing career? Um... I don't know. One of my favorite wins was we were racing in Greenbush and um, it was the second night I bought my lethal and never really raced it before. I mean, we raced it one night in Grand Rapids and came home, put a new body on it and was, it wasn't going to race. And one of my buddies was like, Hey, let's go to Greenbush. I'm like, sure. Why not? Well, the two guys were battling for the lead going into three and all of a sudden they like made the smallest little opening there. And I went through it, passed them both one by like half a track and went back in the pits and my cousin's like i thought you were ripping both sides of the car off there was no room to get through there and well i seen plenty of room and evidently they didn't but that one was fun um i don't know there's just a lot of miscellaneous ones i've never won anything like no labor day shootouts i mean never even won a mighty axe in brainerd when we used to race brainerd i came like three lap short one time mm -hmm. led the whole race don eichens got me at the end and I don't know, nothing, nothing too big, but we got like a couple chicken check national wins from Bemidji and I still can't get the stampede win. I give that one up every year too, but. Oh, like, yeah. all, like the is... hometown big races that drivers have are like the toughest ones for them to win. This is still one of my favorite ones. <laughs> oh yes. But that that means that was a blown motor. That was what that was. Well, at least you got something to sort of remember it by and a nice yeah. little gesture from the... Yeah, it was fun. It's, me and Ryan Gerke started, I don't know, mid-pack, and we were both w working our way forward and just kind of hammer down racetrack. It was a little character, but it was fun, and we both ended up breaking and bullshitting on the infield the rest of the race. That's kind of fun, <laughs> though. 
it's a fun place to watch the race, I guess. But unfortunately, under the circumstances, it probably wasn't fun at the time. No, not really. I mean, we were both in there. We were, we were both, neither one of us were mad. Though. Like, he broke something by hitting a wall, and I blew the motor. And we are both in there just still happy and cheerful and bullshit. And, like, you know, nothing happened. That's part of racing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to take with the, the bad with the good, unfortunately. Um, so, obviously, with the, you being in a Minnesota Modified, you have a – variety of tracks you could kind of go to what do you say would you be your like your regular racing schedule for, for um, typically now we race grand rapids on thursdays um we don't really go many places on friday because fergus is a ways from here we do hit grand forks every time they have the Wasota mods we, we go to grand forks that's like if they have us we're there guaranteed we'll be there um saturdays we used to do Greenbush a lot every now and again i'd bounce to like hibbing or something like that but now with Greenbush losing their promoter they had and i haven't heard anything about them do we hit hibbing more or travel more we're undecided on what we're going to do on a saturday and really a friday because i always say i want to go race fergus more on fridays because the wall intimidates me and i go race it like at the 100 by the end of the weekend i'm i'm comfortable with the wall well then i don't race it again until the next 100 so it's like i need to race the wall more to get comfortable with it and be better at the bigger tracks but then season comes i'm like well i suck there i don't want to go there to run 14th let's go somewhere else i can be good at so it's a double-edged sword that i can't figure out how to get myself there yeah i've heard the wall at fergus falls is definitely uh it takes a little bit to get used to for a lot of drivers yeah it does it and it comes up quick too yeah so i suppose like because you've raced there many times i always like Turn four, it looks like people are going to hit that wall all the time, but it looks like it's banked enough where you kind of just bounce away from it instead of like towards it. Hmm. Kind of, yeah, but let's see, it was not the 123. So in, in 2022, we were there watching and we were sitting outside of turn four and a B-Mod hits the wall, climbs it, rolls over. I mean, rolled over pretty good. And I had to go out for my race of champions race, I think it was. Wasn't too many races later. Well, what do I do? Come out of four in the same spot, hit the wall, start climbing it. What do I picture right there? I'm like, oh God, I seen this happen not long ago, but luckily I got it back down off the wall and was able to keep racing. But you always picture, oh shit, I know what happens next in that kind of situation. Yeah. You know, you just yeah. pucker up Thankfully, and, on and throttle out of it. Thankfully, I haven't seen it happen too many times, but yeah, I think I do remember that wreck. I feel like that was maybe Andrew Inman. I don't remember who it was, but he rolled it over pretty good. Yeah, he, he was... He was pretty upset when he got out of the car. I'm like, well, it's a good thing he's upset because that means he's all right. <laughs> yep, exactly. Another time I watched a guy, it was years and years ago, I think like 2011 or 2012, I was in helping a buddy at uh, the Wasota 100 in Huron. And a guy in a modified hits the wall and rolls over coming out of four down there. And that's a big trick. And I don't know if they didn't have a rev limiter or what happened. And the guy's foot must have been wide open on the floor because he's rolling through the air. And you can hear that motor just free rev. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oof. That guy just wrecked a car and a motor in one shot. I don't uh, know who it was or remember who it was. I just remember watching that happen. And I'm like, that's not good. I, I've i heard stories from when the 100 was in Huron that there would be some nasty wrecks. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a big track. And there's a lot of speed you can get at that thing. Yeah, I'm hoping to get down there for the show and maybe in june uh because i've only been there once but yeah I, just being there once i'm just like dang this place is huge that's the only time i was there i was pitting for another buddy buddy i've never even raced it never stepped foot on it with their car no I, i'm sure it'll take a take a bigger set to kind of handle that speed and track it, it does it does take a bigger set on some of them tracks like that like i'm like excited like princeton opens because it's like this big you know mm -hmm. it's tiny but it's elbows up and there's always contact in it which you know you get a little beat up race car but it's fun the little tracks are fun you say do you have a preference on size of track do you prefer those smaller tracks do you kind of like the more speed um I like the smaller tracks, kind of like Princeton, and I like Grand Forks. There's a lot of banking and carry a lot of speed. It can be really racy. Um, so growing up racing like Bemidji, Brainerd, Grand Rapids, you know, the, the smaller three-eighth stuff is what I'd say I'm more comfortable with. Mm -hmm. You go to a track like Ogilvy or I say Ogilvy, Superior, or Fergus, I'm intimidated running around the outside. Well, I think it's because there's a wall there. So it's kind of a bigger track and there's a wall there. So I don't know which one I'm more scared of. 
that's a good point because like me growing up in north dakota we don't really have any tracks with walls all the way around it and so like when i started going to race more races over here in Min or in minnesota it was like dang walls are very common and so it was definitely definitely a little bit to get used to as a fan as well yeah it's different and then you watch some of these like big block modified shows out east and they have walls on the inside i'm like now that one would be weird yeah that 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 gets goofy like i've raced a couple on like the world of outlaws game i think like port royal and oh uh, what's there they have some weird shaped tracks out east and i'm just like yeah trying to get used to a wall on the inside because you always want to try to cut the corner and then your tire hits the wall and then it just screws up your entire corner yeah well you see some of the tracks out there too they're massive mm -hmm. like big big tracks i'm like there's no way you're getting me out there no, it's like that. That's a different level of racing, I think, out there. It is. It'd be fun to go out there to experience it, you know. To you know, okay, give me a car on a practice day, and let's go turn a couple of practice laps. You know, not just jump in a car and go race with a pack of twenty-five, but it'd be fun. Right. Well, and kind of going back to like your racing schedule. So obviously, I think Grand Forks is racing with soda modifieds at least six times this year. Uh, Devil's Lake is also racing. They race on Saturdays, and I think they have six to ten shows as well. So that could be a good weekend swing for you because I'm probably guessing you haven't been to Devil's Lake before. I have not. I've been there one time as a spectator, and I don't remember the track. Um, but yes, yeah, so we kind of planned on that when we'll take the motor home them weekends, go race Grand Forks on a Friday, stay over there and go hit Devil's Lake. I don't know if we'll do it every time. I guess we'll kind of see how the first time goes. And if it's a track that we like or it's fun, then definitely go back. So, but we will be there at least once this year to test it out. Yeah. And so. I think they're, they've added a whole bunch of new clay. So they're kind of, I think they reshaped the track just a little bit. And nice that it, you don't really have to leave Highway 2 to go back home. Exactly. It's all right there. I mean, with the motorhome, you're probably going to have a lot of headwind on the way there, but get pushed all the way back home. Every time I've gone up to Devil's Lake, I've always gone into the wind yeah. on the way there. Well, it seems like it's it turns. It's on the way there and on the way home somehow. Yeah. yeah. It never seems to be in the favor of people hauling their race cars to the track. And it's just like, of course, we have to battle the wind there. And then we have to battle it back. And it's just like always an adventure. Yeah. Nature well, as far as like races for this year, any big races that you kind of circled on your calendar that you're excited to hit up this year? Um no we kind of we don't know where we're gonna go for sure yet we just kind of want to race and like i don't want a points race at all i mean i've that can take the fun out of it so i just want to race and have fun with it i don't want to race for track points anywhere i don't want to race for a top 10 in nationals i just want to race and have fun so maybe bounce around here and there and um the one we know we're going to go to again is hopefully we don't win the pig for the same reason, but we want to go to the Gurkey Memorial in Fergus again. Um, I do want to go down to Deer Creek once. Will I make it? I don't know. It's kind of on my bucket list is go down there. Um, we'll be in Grand Rapids probably every Thursday. Um, more than likely Labor Day weekend will be Rapids Hibbing area. Um, John Sites race for sure. 100 um we might actually try granite city a couple times especially you look at the purse they put out there the, mm -hmm. they put out a good purse and a good point fund and you know their promoters out there promoting getting getting racers things and you know i like that yeah absolutely so they're doing them, a lot of you know, really good promoting work down there and yep. really excited to see what they come up with for, for this year too i think they're they actually are scheduled to start this sunday we'll see with the weather yeah yeah because ogilvy is supposed to start what two weekends ago and i think they've canceled both so far yeah so we'll see someone's gonna try to pull the trigger i'm sure yeah well devil's lake is supposed to race saturday oh yep that them too yeah i'm kind of keeping an eye on that as well yeah so and then i mean cedar lake's already got two weekend two weekends in but that's a drive for you yeah, that's that's four hours for me. And I'm like, eh, I don't need to like wear myself out like mid-April before the racing season really kicks off. Yeah, that's I mean for us, I think I want to say it's like five, five and a half, I think close to five. So that's one track I raced one time, one weekend. And I did not do well there. I don't know why, but didn't do well. But well, I was we'll, 
I will say my only gripe with going up to like the tracks like Bemidji, Grand Rapids, Hibbing, whatever it may be, it's just it takes so long to get there and there's no short way to get there. <laughs> no, there is not. I mean, it's just we're a ways from, you know, any other track, really. I mean, we got Bemidji here and then even like our next closest is Grand Rapids and that's still hour and 15 minutes probably. Then after that, we got nothing until, you know, Grand Forks or like Ada, that's a Thursday with imca stuff brainerd doesn't have any with soda stuff so we can't go there so i mean we're at two hours so pretty much anywhere other than bemidji and grand rapids yeah so definitely got to put on the miles to get get more racing in but uh definitely some good racing and a lot of good races to hit up from what you're uh what you're looking at for 2024 and so um want to list up any sponsors or any crew members that are part of your racing team or help you out in any way well, we bought our list off the of sponsors, and I'm going to cheat. I don't want to miss any, so we're going to pull up a notepad with with them all on there. there um, we go. got uh, Nick Johnson from Remax, Weir's Machine, Crossroads Auto Glass, Shocker Hitch, QA1, Foster's Foster's Custom Rods, Kale Bitker Brokerage, Whitner Auto Body, Jacobson Concrete Masonry, Furman Designs, Ibach, Groning Storage, Traction Stench, which is us, um, Portable John Rentals and service feta heating and air Kesa logging TNB underground and nick's custom cutting that'd be without all them guys we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to do anything i know i labeled them all off there fast but they, they all help i mean some of them are big some of them are small but they all make it go around yep and every little Becca, bit helps i'm learning that too which i put her to work all the time what's that so my girlfriend Rebecca, we put her to work and make her do as much as she can. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, got to keep her busy too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate yeah, your help her... too cuz you're you're kind of like my unofficial car wash sponsor. So I appreciate that help too. <laughs> well, you got to have a clean car going down the road. So every now and again I just like to throw you a little money and here wash your car, you know. <laughs> there's there's some nights where I leave the track and I'm just like, "Oh, gosh this is great <laughs> yeah you gotta turn on your wipers to wipe off that half inch of dust yeah 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 today's one of those days definitely didn't need to worry about a car wash it got a natural car wash itself yeah. got that pre-rinse got them bugs off there because right now you already got bugs on the window so yep i found that out on the drive uh back from test and tune on saturday i'm like oh bugs are out now <laughs> yeah i don't know what day it was sometime this past weekend i'm like looking at my window i'm like oh shit, i have a crack in my window no, it was a bug. <laughs> Not quite yeah. used to the sight of bugs yet. No, but it didn't splat all yellow. It actually looked like it was like kind of a chip. I'm like, huh. Like, oh, it looks like I got to call Brett at Crossroads Auto Glass to get a new one in there. But nope, it was just a bug. Had to go to the car wash. <laughs> Easy fix. Yeah. So, well, and speaking of getting ready for racing season, we were kind of talking off camera. How close are you to race ready? Um, I got the motor sitting on the floor, so... I mean, I'll put that in probably on Thursday. I'm going to put the motor in. It gets wrapped on Friday and then a couple Over. small things. Um, just put my shocks back on because I had sent them all off for freshening. So right now it's sitting on sticks. But I mean, pretty much other than that, we should be ready by the end of the weekend to go. If we wanted to go somewhere, we could probably still go somewhere, you know, this weekend if weather permitting. But I'm not going to rush it. I don't like to rush it. So maybe the following weekend we'll go find somewhere and go play so there you go hopefully. yeah and I, of course it's it's mid-april right now so there's still a lot of season left so definitely no need to rush it no we we raced quite a bit i mean last year i think we only did 33 shows but like i said we wrecked four motors so we were down the year before i did 40 some the year before that was 50 some so you know it's we usually put in a fair amount of shows i mean it ain't 70 but 50 shows is a lot for you know two people that pretty much pays for it all out of their own pocket mm -hmm. well and of course with the nice winter and spring we've had i'm sure most tracks will be opening pretty close to on time so there'll be plenty of opportunities for racing this summer oh yeah we'll be we'll be around hopefully Perfect. traveling a little more than we did last year like i said i want to try i want to try deer creek if we make it cool if not it's going to be on the bucket list and um mississippi thunder i kind of want to try once that's a cool place yeah so we might make it there yet this year too do they race the same nights or different nights deer mississippi creek and thunder races fridays and deer creek is saturdays huh i hear a swing yeah friday yeah, saturday it, then 
I've never been to Deer Creek, but Mississippi Thunder, I got to sneak down. And it's it's a it's a big track, wide track, but it races awesome. Yeah, I, I was at Deer Creek once. I went to help a buddy out a couple of years ago. And so I rode down with him and that was I was like, oh, this place is beautiful. I want to come race here. So like I want to go down for the fall jamboree. That just looks like a blast. But yeah, know. one of these years I'd like to get down there for that race. It's on it's usually the same weekend as the stampedes that take place up here. Although this year I think it's a different weekend. So it is a different like it's the same thing. It's it interrupts your Jamestown stampede, which is the same weekend as Paul Bunyan stampede. So it's yep. kind of a I have a two-day show three miles from home or go way down there and you know bolt on different tires and a different little bit different set of rules that I don't know to you know go run around the back it's a long ways to go yeah but now it's a different weekend so maybe we'll be down there there you go yeah. still gotta get the tires because they run American racers oh that's right yeah they're a little bit different yep yeah. minor details Mi just minor details yeah. yep we'll go borrow somebody else's scab take off American racers and just go race and have fun I'm sure I'm sure there'll be a racer or two that has a couple just lying around for you to kind of grab a hold of. Oh, I'm sure I like um good buddies like Bob and Jake Smith. I guarantee they have some American racers sitting in the garage. Oh yeah. Yeah. They won't need them. Not until next year <laughs> anyway. Awesome. Well, excited to see you throughout the 2024 season. Hopefully it's quite a bit and hopefully see you in victory lane at the same time as well. Yeah, I hope so. That would be awesome. We need to get a couple wins this year and Hopefully it's a good year and a fun year. Absolutely. Well, thanks again for taking some time out of your schedule and looking forward to seeing you soon. Sounds good. And thank you for having me. Thank you, Josh. And have a good rest of the off season, everyone.